Christ Spiracy. This is another documentary from Kip Anderson. He did What the Health and Cowspiracy and Seaspiracy. I think Seaspiracy, I don't think he directed or wrote those. I think he just produced that one. I have videos on both What the Health and Seaspiracy. I'm not a huge fan of either one, although Seaspiracy is definitely better than What the Health. Christspiracy, I can't, it's so dumb. It's such a dumb name. I know they wanted to continue with the conspiracy thing, Seaspiracy, Cowspiracy, but they didn't with What the Health. Like they could have named it something else. It's so dumb. If you hadn't guessed, this documentary is about religion. So we had What the Health about diet, Cowspiracy about the environment, Seaspiracy about specifically fish and cruelty and the environment, and now we have religion. Specifically, it's about one question. Is there a spiritual or ethical way to kill an animal? They also frame it as like, how would Jesus kill an animal or what would Jesus do? Is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. How would Jesus kill an animal? <laughs> Christianity is definitely the focus of the film, which makes sense given their audience. It's largely going to be Christians who watch it, I would assume. But I think it's really a shame because I think where the movie shines is when they show just how similar all the major religions are when it comes to animals. I'll talk about that more in a minute. So is there a spiritual or ethical way to kill an animal? Kip is a longtime vegan, so obviously the answer is going to be no. How we get there, I should start by saying that I know I'm not the intended audience for this. I've been vegan for many years. I've been atheist my whole life. So I really can't say whether this is convincing to religious omnivores or not. What I can say is that it was a very weird watch for me. Number one, just equating like spiritual and ethical, it, it just hurts my brain. All major religions justify heinous things. So, you know, ethics and religions are clearly not the same thing. But yeah, I get the idea. I get the appeal. You know, most people are religious and they eat animals and they use religious texts like the Bible to defend eating animals, right? Saying God gave them dominion over animals, that sort of thing. They do touch on that briefly in the film, saying uh, dominion is more like stewardship instead of like control. As I said, the film really shined when showing how everyone from Christian priests to Buddhist monks are just so ignorant or confused about animal ethics. Like the Christians are just, just totally ignorant. <laughs> it's like embarrassing to watch. How would Jesus kill an animal? <laughs> that I have no idea. Him saying, I can kill this animal or, uh, oh, let's do that again. Uh, that's not good. The Buddhists, oh my God. What's, what's this thing about animals, guys? What's this thing about eating animals all the time? You want to know about more Buddhist stuff, don't you? So buying and eating animals is wrong because of reincarnation, right? Every animal is essentially like your mother or your father. But if someone provides you with the meat, it's fine. It's okay to eat. Or I think one says, you know, the karmic... Uh, like retribution isn't isn't as great as like buying the meat yourself. One Buddhist says he's um, he's staying with people who eat meat and they prepared dinner. They prepared like sausage and asked for his help. So he helped them. And then he ate the dinner as well. And Kip or whoever asks like, but isn't that your mother or your father? And the guy says, oh, yeah, it, it definitely was. Uh, it tasted good, though. It's clear that the major religions don't deal with animal ethics because they eat animals and they don't want to stop eating animals. They eat animals for the same reason an atheist eats animals, because they want to. It really has nothing to do with religion. And I kind of think that should have been the message of the film, but instead we get a 2000 year conspiracy? 2000 year cover up by the Christian church? Covering up what exactly? that Jesus was vegetarian. And I guess that Chick-fil-A funds the church, so that's why Christians don't talk about animal ethics. That's why they eat animals. <laughs> that's why they're so anti-vegetarianism, because Chick-fil-A, okay. I'll talk about the Jesus stuff a little later, um, but first, th this movie is just all over the place. There are so many scenes that seem to just come out of nowhere, or they seem like they're leading somewhere, 
but then no, we just move on to something else. There's a short clip of Carol Adams. She's an animal rights advocate and a feminist. She's got the politics of meat or the sexual politics. Anyway, they have a very brief clip of her talking about intersectionality, how all of the oppressions are linked. I'm not going to get into my problems with intersectionality. I actually have a really long video on it for patrons. Sorry. My main issue with it here is that it, it's like five seconds. Okay, maybe like 30 seconds. It's so brief. And then we just move on to something else. Like, why is it even included? Another scene, this one I really like, is a shaman. I can't remember where he was indigenous to. First, he's talking about not eating meat because it's not ethereal. It keeps you tied to the ground, something like that. Okay, whatever. Then Kip asks him, okay, but what about people who say they pray or they give thanks to the animal before they eat it? And he says, no, that's just a justification. So he says, I'm, I'm quoting him, some say I've asked God for permission to kill the animal. And then he responds, but you didn't hear what the animal said. That's pretty good, right? And then that's it. I don't think we ever see him again in the movie. Another, oh, really upsetting. It's this little boy talking about going hunting, you know, in his family. That's like a rite of passage, is killing a deer. And he goes hunting and he kills the deer. And at first he's all like hyped up and, you know, his dad and everyone's excited. But then later, you know, it hits him that like he, he killed an animal and he's just has these conflicting feelings. It's just all, it's so upsetting. Again, kind of comes out of nowhere and it's hard to like what... What exactly was the point of that? But um, yeah, it's it's just heartbreaking. The weirdest, I think, the roadkill guy. They interview a guy who eats roadkill and he they show him like biting into like a squirrel or a fox or something he just finds by the road. And at first I thought, oh, they're going to talk about freakinism. They're going to talk about the difference between like eating animals that are essentially waste. No one's No one's eating it. No one's using it versus actually supporting the industry. But no, they don't talk about that at all. They talk about him, again, just eating roadkill and he ate his pet goldfish or something and that became a whole thing. People were really upset about it and they talk about, you know, the hypocrisy of that. You know, th these are people who eat animals regularly. And then we see him again at the end of the movie and surprise, he's vegan now. And we don't really know why, it, like, he just kind of says it feels right to him or some something like that. That's it. Like, wait, what? <laughs> He's not roadkill guy anymore? Why? Like, I, please explain. That might be interesting. I don't know. Oh, yeah, they tell us that the happiest person in the world is vegan. <laughs> it's so stupid. The filmmakers really try to play up the danger aspect of all of this. Like they are in danger, their lives are in danger because they are talking about, you know, Jesus being vegetarian. The church is after them. The beef industry is after them. Is there any threat or danger making a film like this? Yeah, you just wait and see. They will stop at nothing to keep this truth from getting going. Now, some of this, I believe when they're in India and they are documenting the illegal cattle trade there. Like, yeah, they're probably not in danger, but there are activists there who very likely are in danger. I believe the activists they're trying to document this are putting their lives at risk. But the other stuff, I'm pretty skeptical. Well, so first, the first thing that made me go, what? This is early in the film. They go to the temple at Jerusalem and Kip says, during the temple tour, I stayed back while Cam snuck away to find any signs that the temple was a slaughterhouse. That is a direct quote. Snuck implies that Cam, Cameron Waters, I think is his name. He's the other filmmaker. Um, it implies that like he's not supposed to be there. Like it's not a part of the tour. But as they say, like they find signage, like informational stuff down there that clearly is for people like touring the drainage system. <laughs> so that like put me on kind of red alert. Clearly they're trying to make this seem more dangerous than it actually is. So when they later show the drone outside their window and say this drone, we don't know where it came from. It's just been here outside our window for hours. Like really? When they say their house and trailer have been ransacked, nothing was stolen. So clearly whoever did it was trying to send a message. Really? And when Kip says he's being followed, like, is he? They hire a private investigator, this guy named Ryan Shapiro. I looked him up. 
Yes, he's an animal rights activist, of course. He says, quote, We've got 80 pages of documents obtained through Freedom of Information Act requests showing the USDA's beef board identified your films as a potential crisis that must be protected and defended against. And you see, like, cowspiracy on there when he's talking about that. While this is alarming, to be clear, like, the government we pay taxes to should have no place in trying to counter or silence environmentalists. Like, it's, it's so fucked up how tied up meat and government are. But the point here is not that, it's that this shows Kip is in danger. There is no indication of that. So the 80 pages of documents aren't even shown. Everything is like zoomed by really quickly. They do have a blurry shot of an email from a Steve May to a Mike King talking about Cowspiracy playing at City Hall. And his neighbors, Steve's, they want him to show up and to speak against the film. So he asks Mike, do you have any pieces that I can have as reference materials so that I don't ramble when taking these folks on? It looks like they are all about the methane. So again, it's bad but it's not dangerous. And you know, if there were dangerous stuff, like actual threats, they would be showing it in this movie. They would have spent like 20 minutes on it. If your films affect people's beliefs, that will make you a threat in their eyes and industry will move to neutralize the threat. Neutralize the threat. What does that sound like to you? <laughs> They're really going out of their way to make it seem like their lives are on the line. And I'm sorry, I just don't believe it. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. The Jesus stuff, the big conclusion, the big revelation at the end of the film that Jesus was vegetarian, implying that Christianity includes or should include, should encourage vegetarianism. So they base this on, number one, Jesus of Nazareth. Supposedly, Nazareth was not a place. It instead referred to a group of people, the Nazarenes, who were vegetarian. So if Jesus was part of this Nazarene group, then he presumably would have been vegetarian. Two, the Den of Thieves, the temple at Jerusalem story. When Jesus goes to the temple, he drives out the priests who are making money via the animal sacrifices. It's traditionally taught as a story about like wealth and corruption, but the filmmakers say no, Jesus, his primary concern was not with the money. It was with the sacrifices themselves. He was concerned about the animals. So let's start with the Nazareth thing. So they based this on a book by a historian at the time, Flavius Josephus. He supposedly recorded all of the cities and villages at that time, and there's no mention of a Nazareth. So they say Nazareth didn't exist. They also have one scholar who says, yeah, it didn't exist. Uh, this feels like cherry picking to me. To only include one scholar who says it didn't exist, when seemingly the vast majority of theologians and historians say, like, if Jesus existed, that he was from Nazareth, that Nazareth existed. Apparently, the book they reference, Josephus' book, it didn't mention Nazareth because it was so small. It was like 50 to 100 people at the time. That's according to Alexander Lang at restorativefaith.org. He's both a Christian and a vegetarian, actually. His whole thing is Christianity for the 21st century rationalist. His whole review of the movie is pretty interesting. He says the Nazarene group thing is bunk too that, you know, Jesus was part of this vegetarian group. He says what the filmmakers are actually talking about are the Nazarean Mandians who still exist today, and they believe Jesus was vegetarian. Unlike the Gospels in the New Testament, which were written in the first century within 40 to 60 years of Jesus's life, the scriptures of the Nazarean Mandians were written in the second century or later, which suggests the historical accuracy is unreliable at best or more likely non-existent. I'm not saying this Alexander Lang guy is right and the documentary is wrong. I truly have no idea, nor do I care. Again, I'm not Christian. My decision to not eat meat has nothing to do with Jesus. But if you are going to make bold claims to Christians, like that Jesus wasn't from Nazareth, but actually part of a group of people who were vegetarian, and therefore he was vegetarian, I think you need to have some pretty strong evidence to back that up, and they don't have that. I think the most you can say is that it's questionable. Did they mean from Nazareth a place or a group? Eh, 
you know, who knows? There's more evidence, though. The second piece that I mentioned, talking about the Den of Thieves, this they defend mostly with one scene. So they have this Hebrew translator who says Jesus calls them robbers, a den of robbers. And Kip or whoever asks, like, is that what it says? Is that the actual translation? And so she goes to look to make sure. And she's like, hmm, wait a minute. And she goes and gets like another book. And I think another book ultimately says it translates to violent ones. And she's kind of like, mm, like, this is weird. I think she says, oh, this raises a lot of questions, something like that. It's a really good scene, honestly. Um, but I, I don't, is it really the slam dunk they portray it as? They portray it as, oh, okay, clearly he's calling them murderers. Like he's talking about the animal sacrifices. That's what he cared about. He cared about the animals. I just don't find that very compelling. And plus this was just one translator's opinion. I would love to hear from her. I mean, who knows what she even thought this movie was. Often these documentaries come out and the interviewees are like, wait, what? That's what I was part of? <laughs> so yeah, that's their proof that Jesus cared about the animals and that's what the church is covering up. That whole story had to do with the animal sacrifices and ultimately Jesus's vegetarianism instead of the wealth and corruption. I, it would be so cool if that were true, but I'm just not buying it. A steady feed of assertions about famous dead people with scant textual support mixed with wide-eyed gormless naivete. That's from Leslie Felperin at The Guardian and yeah, I have to agree with that. It felt like it was made for vegans to feel self-righteous. There was not enough focus on cold, hard exploration of religious texts and too much focus on making religious people look stupid in interviews. I don't see what was productive about the film because it made me feel shitty and hopeless, and it makes everyone else probably feel like vegans think they're stupid, which is somewhat true, but we don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> that was from a vegan on the vegan subreddit. And it's all so stupid. Number one, you run the risk of just pissing Christians off, particularly those who are more familiar with the Bible. And number two, I think you can easily defend vegetarianism without any of the Jesus was vegetarian stuff. I mean, number one, the Garden of Eden was vegan. Like the ideal world is a vegan world. I don't know. I kind of think that's enough right there. There's so much more text that you can point to as well as many vegan and vegetarian Christians have done, as all Christians do, right? They all point to what they want. They pick and choose what they want from the Bible. You can be a homophobic Christian. The Bible supports that. You can be a progressive Christian. The Bible supports that too. My point is that if you're saying the Bible supports eating animals, that's because you want it to say that. It's because you want to eat animals. And I would argue you're picking the worst of the Bible, right? You're picking the worst, most violent parts of the Bible, just like the homophobic Christians do. It says more about you than it does Jesus or Christianity. So I wish that were more the focus of the film, along with the cruelty of the industry. There, to be clear, there's a lot of um, footage of animal cruelty in this. And they do kind of show like factory farming, kosher, halal, but they spend so little time on it. Like the halal and kosher, they basically just ask like a couple activists who are like, oh yeah, it's still cruel. And then I think they had some, like an employee at one of the slaughterhouses for kosher maybe. And he's like, yeah, it's awful. Like, I wish they had spent more time on that. They have a terrific part where they go to this God-fearing Christian man who says, yeah, I'm killing animals the way Jesus would. And, you know, he's got them outside. I mean, he's got the chickens in like a little cage. I think he even says they can run around and then Kip's like in the, in the cage. <laughs> but they kill the chickens, they hang them upside down and slit their throats, which is still awful. And then the pigs and goats, like all the other creatures, they're sent to slaughterhouses. And he's like, yeah, I think this is the way Jesus would do it. I wish they had focused more on all of that, maybe even talking about free range and stuff too, to show like, look, killing animals is, it's dirty work, it's death, it's terrible. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of Christ spiracy, but you know what? It's still better than what the health. Thank you so much, everybody. I would love to know your thoughts if you've seen Christ Spiracy. Um, oh, that's one thing I didn't say. It's not on 
Netflix. I think originally it was supposed to be on Netflix. Wasn't the last one on Netflix, Seaspiracy? You have to go to their website to watch it. You have to sign up with an email address, which I hate. And they have this little intro video before the documentary starts explaining why they say, they don't say Netflix by name, but they say that um, they were instructed to remove certain things from the documentary to like tone it down or whatever. Again, they don't say what. I'm guessing the Jesus was vegetarian stuff, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But they say, no, they were not willing to do that. So they actually bought the rights back and are releasing it themselves. Having seen the film, that seems like a terrible decision. I suspect what Netflix wanted them to remove is probably reasonable. And now they are going to reach far less people. I didn't even know about this except for a patron telling me. Whereas Seaspiracy, I remember, whereas Seaspiracy, I remember seeing just on Netflix and they're selling like extra footage. You, you have to pay for extra behind the scenes stuff. Like that's fine. But to have the film just on their own thing, like, man, you're going to get fewer people watching it. Like a lot fewer. Also, you can say Jesus was vegetarian or the church is after you or whatever. <laughs> Oh my god, like, so not worth it. So anyway, please share below if you have seen it and your thoughts on the movie, particularly those of you who are Christian and vegetarian. Like and subscribe, of course, and thank you so much to my members and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. They support the channel. They help keep the channel going. I don't make enough via ad revenue to rely on that alone, and I don't like doing sponsorships. Vast majority of the companies doing brand deals have like bullshit products. So yeah, again, thank you so much to my members and my patrons. And oh, I do uh, two exclusive videos for tier two members and patrons. I mentioned the intersectionality video earlier. That is one of those. So every month I do a vlog just talking about whatever stuff's going on in my life. And then I do a controversial one. And it's like, just whatever I want to talk about, stuff unrelated to veganism or kind of related, like intersectionality. Anyway, thanks again, guys. New video soon. Okay, I'm going to play Connections again because <laughs> that was fun. I'm not going to do this every video. This will probably be the last time. Pipe cleaner, peach, egg, turtle, clam, princess, marker. Har oh my God, this seems like a hard one. Ogre. Oh, Shrek. Ogre, donkey, princess. What else is it? I don't know Shrek. Is there a dragon? Okay, I'm not I'm not going to do that yet. I did so well last time. Like it's, <laughs> it's only downhill from here. Yeah, I keep seeing Mushroom Kingdom. I got to shuffle it. There we go. I keep seeing Mushroom Kingdom. I'm just like Mario. <laughs> oh, could it be? Wasn't it Donkey? Donkey Kong? Mushroom, Peach, Princess Peach, oh shit, Turtle, I mean the Koopas are kind of turtles, Kingdom, Mushroom, Peach, Donkey, oh no, all right, let's go to something else, Fleece, Fleece, okay, Fleece could be like, you know, wool, right, or it could be like to fleece someone, to like steal, right, is there anything else like that on here, no, Carpet. Carpet. Doesn't, there's no other meaning for carpet. <laughs> Carpet's just carpet. <laughs> okay, long things, caterpillar and pipe cleaner, right? Anything else like that? Turtle, fleece, clam. I mean, turtles stick their heads out. <laughs> I'm getting desperate here. Dragon, dragons are long. Oh no. Oh, this is bad. You can use a pipe cleaner for crafting. Pipe cleaner, marker. Oh, there's nothing else here though. No. See, do I want to go the Shrek route? Donkey ogre. Because otherwise, what's ogre going to be with? Well, do I do dragon? There is a dragon, right? Oh, fuck. <gasps> it's wrong. Oh, <gasps> I swear, doing it on here, just like, <laughs> a good mojo or something. <laughs> Figures in Shrek. Wow, it's a blue one. All right. So I'm missing the easiest one. What's happening here? So we still have Mushroom and Peach and Kingdom, but yeah, what else? 
Yoshi has the eggs, right? <laughs> this is terrible. I should keep seeing Mushroom Kingdom. And I keep... No. <laughs> Leave it alone. Oh, now... Oh, Marker Kingdom. Hmm. Fleece pipe cleaner carpet. Those all have kind of soft... And... And Peach. Peach has fuzz, too. <gasps> Wait a minute. Could that be it? <gasps> Fuck. One away, though. Mushroom, Kingdom, Peach. There are those caterpillar things in Mario. Am I really going to choose that? That is so not right. Oh, my God. All right, I'm going to do Turtle, Clam, Caterpillar... And pipe cleaner. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Egg, nut, mushroom, peach. It's food. That's that's my. What is it? Things that are fuzzy. Caterpillar. Oh, some caterpillars are fuzzy. Oh right. Things that are fuzzy. Caterpillar, fleece, peach, pipe cleaner. Things with shells. Magic, magic carpet, magic kingdom, magic marker, magic mushroom. So that's more like a typical day of connections for me. <laughs> Are there cowboy boots on this shirt? I'm just realizing there are horses and horseshoes and like Fucking, what? Cowboy boots? How did I not see? I just saw the flowers. I'm not wearing this. <laughs> I gotta change. Okay, there we go. That's better. It's a Star Wars shirt all over again. I just look for two seconds and I'm like, ooh, pretty cut, pretty color. I like it. Now I'm thinking I should have worn it. <laughs> Maybe I'll wear it next time and <laughs> see if anyone notices. <laughs>